and welcome to another Wi-Fi Sheep Tech video with me, Tom. Now, those of you that follow the channel will know I've been working on a new 8-bit game for the BBC Microsystem called Nanogangs. Now, this project's been going on for about two or three years now, I've lost count. However, I have done some work, I've done some progress on the game, so this is an update video to show you basically what I've been up to and where we are in development. Uh, for today's demonstration, we'll be running on an original BBC Micro Model B, which is a 32K of RAM machine, and we'll be running off reused five and a quarter inch floppy disk. So enjoy. Okay, as already mentioned, for this demonstration, we're going to use original hardware this time. So I'm using a color composite output from BBC Micro. This is modified. It's going via the RF modulator, which has just had its tuner cut, and the um, composite feed fed straight through. So the quality is probably not going to be as good had we run this on an emulator, but I wanted to show how this game actually works on authentic hardware. So we just put the disc in the drive. And now we'll do a shift break to load up. From the uh, first version that I put on YouTube, I've rewritten the introduction screen. This is my uh, brand, iNet Computer. The logo has now changed, so this needs to be updated. And we have a new splash screen for what was effectively called the Wakefield build. This was the version that went out to the Wakefield RISC-RS Acorn exhibition earlier this year. We we'll just press space and we'll go through to the menu. You'll notice that I've now got new graphical menus for uh, for the game. So we've got much more, if you like, advanced graphics on the limitations of the system. How this works is it's 20k screen dumps, uh, which are loading off disk straight into the video RAM. Uh, so the graphics are made on another system like a Mac or PC, then using a piece of converter software on Windows flashed over to BBC Micro uh, screen image format. Uh, in mode 2, which gives you eight logical colours, well, they say 16, but technically it's, it's eight individual colours, including black and white, uh, you get uh, 20K, basically, uh, is used per screen mode. So you have to, each image we load is 20K. It's quite wasteful on the system, considering the floppy disks are only capable of holding 200K in the native DFS file format, which is compatible with the earlier BBC Micros. Anyway, here's the menu system. So we can select controls. Pretty self-explanatory. Extras isn't got anything to it at the moment. Yeah, work in progress, check back soon. <laughs> this game's been a work in progress for some time. And credits will roll back around. So what we'll do is we'll go new game. You can tell how it's going to load data off the drive. Uh, because I've only got 32k of RAM. 20 of that's taken off in video RAM or screen RAM. So realistically it's about 8k available per, if you like, screen. So we have to shuffle in data, shuffle out data, shuffle in data. I know some people can do things in machine code or 6502 assembly language to get around this. I'm writing this in BBC Basic. So what you're seeing is running entirely in BBC Basic, which is notorious for being very, very slow. Um, but as a reason for that, it's because this game has an education element and also I want to be able to easily port it to newer systems like RISC-OS on the Raspberry Pi. RISC-OS also uses a modern version of BBC Basic built in, so it'd be nice to get this game ported over once we're done running it on the 8-bit system. Hence why I don't really want to opt into using 6502 if I can help it. So again, a reminder, everything you're going to see is written entirely in BBC Basic. So we've got the character screen. Uh, we can create a new character. Uh, should we do that? Yeah, why not? So we'll use an empty slot. Name, I think it was Bob last time. We'll go with this time. Uh, Dave. Dave the Nanogang. Shell colour. Uh, what did I do last time? 
Uh, let's say two. I'm, I'm in a sort of green mood. So we'll say two for green. Base, um, five. Is that okay? Yes, we'll say yes, that's fine. And we now load into level one. And there we go. So our custom character Dave has now been loaded in. Space jumps, arrow keys, cursor go left and right. And away we go, just by jumping onto these platforms. I'm beginning to regret my colour decision now, but never mind. <laughs> so you've got icons uh, such as hearts to give you an extra life you can pick up. Um, I have got a little secret Easter egg built in, which I'm not finished yet. But if we head down here, picking up some interference from somewhere, uh, this is a sort of a secret Cloudland type level where you'll be able to pick up bonuses and extra lives and things by jump hopping onto the cloud platforms i've been playing an awful lot of um nintendo sort of like super mario and um kirby's adventure and things like that on the nes classic edition so uh it's quite influenced my uh my own coding and then for this one we just drop down back out the sky and we'll drop back down there we go So we can pick up the heart, no problem. Moving on. Okay, this is the um, baddie. I think I mentioned about the slowdown before. It's yeah, it's noticeable. It's not so bad if you play on the BBC Master System, which was the later of the BBC microcomputers. But here on the uh, Model B original, it's yeah, it's a little slow if you've got too much going on the screen at one time. So. Just to prove, yeah, there is a collision detection. It will detect if you hit the baddie or the uh, nano flea in this case. And on we go. So we have another nano game to rescue. So we pick them up. And then we head to the finish gate. Okay, I can't remember if level two was in the last demo of this. I don't think it was. So, uh, so this is the sort of half of level two. So I've introduced a new brick texture. Again, if you sort of miss plunge into water, lose a life, resets, try again. And we've now got um, sort of new challenges and puzzles in the level. So, for example, here we need to try and get past, and we can't do so because of this sort of barrier or wall that's in the way. So, if we drop down here, there's a key. And you see that actually drops the um, gate, if you like. And then we can actually jump back over. And there we go. That was as far as the tech demo went at this point, And I've still not done any more since. So it was just a case of making your way to the flag or the finish gate. And the game then just goes into reset mode. However, uh, if we just title back through, I'll just show if we ask for another new game, you'll notice it's actually saved Dave. So that nanogram we created has been saved to disk. And there we go, there's our player, we're ready to go again. At the moment it just resets, it doesn't save any score data, live data, anything like that. It just resets back to the beginning. Again, I need to work on that, I need to build some more levels. I just need to get on and do this game, and it's just finding the time to do it.
So there we go, that was the latest build of Nano Gangs for the BBC Micro. Thanks so much for watching this video, hope you've really enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to us right here on Wi-Fi Sheep, and I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.